Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and several other topics related to environment. So in this session, we are going to learn about this interesting concept of erosional surfaces. Now it's very important to understand that erosional surfaces are not those surfaces that are made just by the process of erosion. So then what it is? Remember, erosional surface is the last stage of erosion, not the beginning of erosion. That is important to remember when we talk about erosional surfaces. Many times I've seen people getting confused with erosional landforms. So erosional landforms are something else and erosional surface concept is something else. But aren't they too related? Yes, definitely they are too related because erosional landforms simply when we say it means we are talking about the work of various erosional agents. For example, running water, glacier, air, that is wind, right? So if you are talking about these processes that operate and evolution happens in terms of landforms, so those landforms are the erosional landforms. But when we say erosional surface, it means when these landforms are completely eroded, when it is the remnant that is left after erosion, that surface is called erosional surface. So this is the linkage between erosional landforms and erosional surface. Erosional landforms are the beginning of the process when these landforms actually evolve and gradually these landforms actually goes back to the base level and then erosional surfaces are created. So, let's understand in details what are these erosional surfaces, what are its various expressions, what are its various types and who are the scholars who gave concepts of various kinds of erosional surfaces. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So, we'll meet back after this introduction. So now let's elaborate these erosional surfaces which we also know by the name of planation surfaces, right? So before we go ahead and elaborate various kinds of these erosional surfaces, let's understand this particular table. So what does it say? Here you have something called global terms and here something called regional terms. So first it is about scales. So one is at global scale, one is at regional scale. So let's understand global scale first. In global scale, we have criteria for definition of these surfaces. So one is on the basis of its genesis and appearance. Genesis is the origin. That is where you have something called erosion surface, denudation surface, penny plane, pedi plane, edge surface, exhumed surface. So if you look at these expressions, these are purely on the basis of their origin, genesis, right? That's important. And then if you go in terms of appearance, it is here, which is planation surface. So what is here? Simply the plane, right? If you say planation surface, it is just how it appears like a plane, right? Then if you look into this ancient age and preservation to the present, so according to that, the classification is paleosurface, relict landforms and remember relict landforms of two processes. One is non-glacial, the other is glacial process and also pre-glacial landforms. So when we say here, this particular concept is based on timeline, it is based on historicity, it is based on ancient age and preservation till present, right? And then we have something which is in the regional connotation. So what is this? Regional appearance and surface remnants. Remember, pelaic surface and modus planes. So this is the classification of the planation surface that we are learning right so now let's elaborate and look into these particular erosional surfaces which is part of this global terminology based on genesis based on origin that's important so erosional surfaces if we see this is basically what it is not erosional landform it is erosional surface that is there after the landforms are eroded that's important. So surface is created by the process of erosion and formed in the last stage of erosional cycle. Because remember, all these landforms that we have talked, glacial, fluvial, aeolian, karst, they were not in the last stage. They had a particular evolution cycle. From the beginning, they were erosional and depositional landforms. But this is important to remember that planation surface or erosional surface is essentially formed in the last stage of erosional cycle, not formed by the deposition and tectonic fault. This is a point to remember here. Then, erosional surface in Indian context, if we want to look here, the erosional surface cannot be there in Himalayan region. Why? 
because they are in youthful stage they are not in the last stage so remember erosional surface is only where you have relic landforms if you have last stage of landforms right where upliftment has stopped almost right so that's important to remember erosional surface cannot be found in great indian plains because it has been made up of deposition so then where is erosional surface western coastal plains is not an erosional surface because it is made up of tectonic fault so many times people get confused that then what is this erosional surface if it is not in himalayan region it is not in plain it is not in western ghat where is erosional surface then so remember the erosional surface possibilities in india are in aravalli range chhota nagpur plateau and deccan plateau region because these are the relict systems these are the ancient systems whose present scenario is in terms of the planation surface through ages right since their origin so they are almost in their last stage we can say right so they are very old no tectonic upliftment or faulting is happening there and no large scale construction activities such as sedimentary deposition are happening that's why if we look into india never talk about erosional surfaces in himalayan region or plain area or western ghats remember this point always talk about erosional or planation surface in Aravalli region, Chhota Nagpur region, and Deccan Plateau region. That's important. Now let's elaborate further more. Now it's very important to understand how to find out these erosional surfaces. Now it's very important to understand the mechanism of finding it, the method of finding it. So the erosional surface can be found by making a superimposed profile of geographical landforms in a given area. So what is the superimposed profile of geographical landforms? All the landforms of various times superimposed in a particular area. That's important. So superimposition will give us polycyclic landforms, will give us stories of different evolutions of various kinds of landforms. And then we'll be able to understand that what is the present, how it is formed and where the past was. So erosional surface may be found on the point where two or more geographical profiles cut together. Right. That's very important that when more than one geographical profile and when we say profile, it means we're talking about the entire erosional structure right from the young to the old stage when the entire process operates, then this is one profile. So there are several profiles that may coalesce together. Right. So following our examples of erosional surface that you can see here, that is Penny planes of Devis. Remember, we have already learned about normal cycle of erosion, which is division cycle of erosion. And his concept was based in Appalachian Mountains in USA. And it represented three such uplifted penny planes. Remember, Shuli Plain, Harrisburg Plain, and Somerville Penny Plain. So these are the three penny planes he talked about. Right? Then, Pat lands of Ranchi Plateau in India and Palamu uplands, if you see, part of Chotanagpur region. So there you see uplifted penny planes that's important and other such examples are end rump given by Penck, pan plane by Crickme, pedi plane by lc king h plane by thomas cryo planes that is permafrost areas which were talked about many scholars that is like peltier and others and base level which was talked about by powell right so these were other surfaces that were talked in terms of geomorphic expressions like planation surfaces and their formation apart from this we have several minor erosional or you can say planation surface as well for example valley terraces right because of the earlier glaciation these terraces were formed and now they are now part of the relic system beach terraces marine terraces right so it's important that it must be in the final shape it must not have the process operating right now right it must be part of the end portion that's important to remember now we have a list a table here the list of planation or erosional surfaces and here is a diagram where you see penny plane pedi plane weathering surfaces and also stripped edge planes now if you look into this particular diagram what you observe penny planation of division model we have eroded relief at the end and here you have penny plane in the end stage again you have this pedi planation right combination of the pediments and then here you have etch planes. Now etch planes are what? Etch, etching, the word itself is engraving, right? Corrosion of the surface. So that is the erosional remnants you see when something has passed over like a glacier and it has corroded the surface. It has scratched the surface. That is the etch plane, right? So these are certain surfaces. Now, if you look here, this is type of paleo planes, right? And you have the references that who gave the concept. So erosional surface, this concept began 
by Adams in 1975 as a conceptual part. And then this definition of Adams is important. A surface formed by removal of material through agents of erosion but not mass movements or weathering. That's important. This was the simplest definition. Now coming to the denudational surface, if you see here, a surface created by denudational process. Now when we say denudational process, it is not simply just erosion. Erosional surface, only erosion. But denudational surface, weathering plus erosion, mass wasting, all those things. So you have Lidmar and Bergstrom. Then you talk about penny plane. We have already talked in details about, you know, penny plane. So you can watch the normal cycle of erosion video again here by Davis, 1899. So this penny plane is the last low relief surface that is almost featureless, which has certain remnants called monadnox, right? So this was talked about Davis. Then we have pediplanation by L.C. King. So a flat low relief area at the foot, pedi word, the pedi is foot, pedi, pedicure, so related to foot. So foot of an elevated feature such as a hill or mountain when they form residual hills, right? That is the residue, the pediplanation. That's important. Then further we look into the pan plane. Now pan plane was given by Crickmay, right? So Crickmay's concept, it is basically a broad and level surface fashioned by lateral corrosion of river. When all the rivers are laterally eroding and making the surface flat, plane, and when they join together, it forms like a pan so you have a frying pan the pan shape right so it's a pan shape by different rivers lateral erosion coming together so joining of various you know planes by different rivers together will give us a pan plane so that's important then we have edge surface and edge plane by Budel and Thomas so this is important here in terms of weathering because if you have too much of weathering and you have too much of scratchy surface, right, especially in tropical and subtropical environments, you do chemical weathering as well. So lots of regolith formation, broken rock fragments. If you look here, right, you can observe. So this kind of remnants is also there. These are called edge planes. And then we have exhumed surfaces. Now, when we say exhumed, it means it has been taken out from the history right so it has been exhumed again it is now on the surface earlier it was below the surface the so surface covered by for example paleozoic or mesozoic cover rocks and later successively uncovered so this was lidmars and bergstrom concept now if you look into another planation surface definition here land surface modeled by surface or near surface wear on the rock mass this is in terms of planation surface and paleo surface as the word suggests it's about the history the geological history so it is an identifiable topographic surface of either endogenic or exogenic origin right and now it is displaying the effects of surface alteration which is due to the prolonged impact of weathering erosion and several non-depositional aspects so this is the entire table in terms of erosional surface and also their concepts and the scholars who are involved right now let's take a case study of pan plane because we have already discussed about the pedi plane penny plane all these concepts so pan plane was given by colin hater crickman now remember one thing here this was only given to express disagreement for division concept. Now remember, Crick may asserted that there are several discrepancies in the division model and he talked about lateral planation or erosion by the meandering rivers. He said that meandering rivers do not operate in single cycle. There can be several meandering rivers and then they can form plain surfaces and later these water divides and water summits will be eroded and these plain surfaces will be joined together to form a large plain, right? So many rivers and its tributaries together forming a plain, making it a pan plain. So if you want to find an example, the Carpentaria region of Australia. Now this area, if you see the Northern Australia, Gulf of Carpentaria, you see it is full of these river and its numerous tributaries. Right? So here Cox River, Calvert, right? Mark Arthur, Flinders, Normal River. So all these Gilbert River, these are part of this Carpentaria region which has given the shape of pan plain to this particular region of northern part of Australia. So this is one of the examples where you can see pan plain. So if you look here in the concept of pan plain, this is the evolution. Now here you have streams. This is the water divide here. Gradually what happens to this water divide? Lateral erosion is happening at each stage, right? The river is laterally eroding, side erosion is happening and the flat plane is formed. So you see this valley and this valley is now joined here in a larger pan shape. So this is where you have a 
pan plane. So pan plane means this plane and this plane together making a pan plane. So more than one river is involved, right? So this is the penultimate stage of cycle of pan planation, which sets in the cessation of vertical erosion and valley deepening and lateral erosion becomes more active according to Crickme. So lateral erosion causes gradual back wasting of interflues. Remember the concept of back wasting we have already learned in the concepts of parallel retreat initiated by originally Penck and later on developed by Elsie King. So when we say this back wasting happens, so this is what we are talking here that gradually these back wasting would lead to the complete erosion of these water divides. And that's where this flood plain will be formed, right? So what happens? Numerous flood plains ultimately join together where majority of interflues are eliminated. So these interflues will be eliminated and confluence planes, the other name for pan plane is confluence plane. So remember this confluence of two different planes by different river together forming a pan plane. So Crickme's concept of pan planation could not command wide acceptance by scientific community. Why? Because it had lots of emphasis on lateral erosion right too much of emphasis on lateral erosion he said that lateral erosion is the thing no vertical erosion but lateral erosion together will actually lead to this particular formation and complete erosion of interflues that's where the planation surface will be created and that will be called pan plane as part of the erosional surface right so Crickme's concept was because overemphasized, so it was, you know, criticized, but it paves way for important thought that there are various places where you have different river valleys and in future they may form a plane together. Right now there may be a water divide in between these river, right? So that's important to understand. So now when we have discussed in details related to the planation surface, erosional surfaces of various kinds, various scholars, there are different concepts, penny planes, pedi planes, pan planes, edge planes, right? So when we have talked about all all these surfaces in the next session we'll be talking about the pediments their formation and various theories so don't go anywhere keep watching keep sharing keep learning and be safe best wishes